to the first and last episode of electromagnetism in which we're going to discuss Gauss's law, Maxwell's first equation. I'm going to explain Maxwell's first equation without using any math at all except vector calculus and some linear algebra. So let's get started. So here's how we can understand it. Let's say you have a positive charge. Starting from the real basics here, what does the electric field for a positive charge look like? Well, it's pretty simple. You might say the electric field for a positive charge is radially outwards in every direction. Okay, well, Gauss thought, what if I put a circle here? Question is, why would you do that? Well, let's see what happens when you do. If I put a circle here, you might notice it looks like each of these electric field lines are headed outwards, right? They cross the circle and then they go out, right? They're going out, crossing the circle. Okay, big deal. Why would you do that? Who knows? Who cares? Nobody yet. Okay, it just looks like there are lines crossing a circle. Big deal. Now, what if instead of a plus charge, you have a minus charge? What does the electric field lines for a minus charge look like? Well, they're radially inwards, right? So this time, it looks exactly like the plus charge, but now they're coming in instead of going out. Now, as usual, Gauss comes in and looks at this and he thinks, huh, what if I put a circle here? Okay, well, we're going to let Gauss have his fun. Put the circle here. And Gauss notices something. Again, each one of the electric field lines cross the circle. All right, big deal. So what? Well, this time they're crossing the circle, but they're going in, right? So it, it looks kind of obvious to you, you might think. Uh, what's the big deal here? But it's coming. Here, for the plus charge, the electric field lines are crossing and going out of the circle. Here, for the negative charge, the electric field lines are uh, crossing the black circle and coming in, right? All right, so Gauss thinks about this long and hard, and he thinks, okay, what if I come up with some kind of a mathematical operator to describe what's happening here, okay? And I'm going to say that if the field lines are going out, that operator is going to be positive, Okay, and if the field lines are coming in, the operator is going to be negative. Okay, so the operator is going to be positive in this case and negative in this case, whatever that operator is. Okay, and Gauss thinks, okay, I mean, this looks a lot like uh, when you turn on your faucet, when you turn on your, when you go to your bathroom and you turn on your faucet, you'll see that all the water in the faucet kinds of drains in, 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 the, in the faucet, right, or in the sink. All the water from the faucet drains in the sink. And so Gauss thinks about this and he thinks, wait, don't these electric field lines look a lot like water? And aren't they draining inside of this negative charge? Okay, so let me call this a sink. And what about here? All the electric field lines look like they're being uh, sprouted out of this positive charge. Let me call that a faucet. In other words, a source. Okay? So this is called a source when you have a positive uh, thing and a sink when you have a negative thing. So what is this thing? The thing is the divergence of the electric field. The divergence of the electric field. That's what's positive here. And that's what's negative here. Okay, this whole thing right here is that called the divergence of the electric field. All it's saying is, okay, how much is the electric field going in or going, uh, how much is the electric field going out or coming in? Okay, going out, coming in. Here, all of the electric field lines are going out, so you have a positive divergence. Here, all the electric field lines are coming in. So you have a negative divergence. But now you're thinking, oh, wait, 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 you just threw a lot of stuff at us. Okay, what is this? What is this upside down triangle? What is this dot? And what is this E? All right, so let me explain, these, uh, explain this step by step. First of all, this upside down triangle. This upside down triangle is known as NABLA. Okay, that's the name of this thing. NABLA. It's good to have a name, but it doesn't mean anything. What does uh, NABLA actually do? Well, NABLA has a brother. 
and uh, you know it very well. If I write it right side up, this is known as delta, right? And if I apply delta to a variable, you know very well what it's asking. This is just asking what's the change in x. So it might be x2 minus x1. Now nabla I can't apply to any random variable. I have to apply it to a function. Okay, a function. And this function uh, might be a function of x, y, and z. Okay, so when I apply the nabla operator, oops, I wrote delta instead of nabla. When I apply the uh, nabla operator, what do I get? I get the change in this function over x, the change in this function over y, and the change in this function over z. So the nabla operator is almost like its brother delta operator, right? You can see the nabla operator is just telling me how much a function changes in every direction, x, y, and z, right? So really what this is telling me is, okay, how much is the electric field changing in every direction? Well here, it's changing so it's going outwards of the circle, positive. Here the electric field lines are all coming in, so the divergence is negative. This dot right here signifies a dot product, okay? There's a bunch of things you can do with this NABLA operator. It's very versatile. In future Maxwell equations, we're going to see that you there's two choices, actually three, uh, and the third one is nothing at all. There's three ways you can combine NABLA with a function. You can do nothing at all, right? Like this, NABLA of f. That just tells you, okay, here's how much the function changes in every direction. Or you can use one of these guys. This right here is a dot. And this dot is taking a dot product of the NABLA operator with the function. In this case, our function is the electric field. And so when we take the dot product of NABLA with with the electric field, what that tells us is divergence. It tells us how much does the electric field spread out or come in, okay? So here, the electric field is all, all the lines are spreading out. All the lines are spreading out. And so the divergence is positive. The spread of the electric field is positive. Here, the electric field lines are all coming in. They're all coming in. And so the divergence is negative, right? The spread of the electric field is negative, right? Here you have a source, here you have a sink. Sink because the electric field lines are like water. They're pouring into the, to the sink. All the wa water from the faucet is pouring into the sink. Here the electric field lines are acting uh, as if they're coming from a source, as if the positive charge is like a source emitting field lines outwards. Now, let's go a little bit deeper into this. What if, is there any way I can get a divergence of zero? Is there any way that I can do that? Well, yeah. Gauss thought, okay, here's a plus charge, but what if I don't put the circle surrounding the plus charge? What, what if I just put the circle outside? Well, okay, how does the field lines for any positive charge look like? Well, they go radially outwards as usual, right? So radially outwards. I'm just drawing those ones specifically because they cross the circle. And so let's take a look at the lines that cross the circle, right? They here, let's look at this field line. It comes in over here, then goes out over here. Comes in here, goes out here. This one comes in here, goes out here. So it's interesting, right? Here, all the field lines, they're, cr they're crossing the circle, but they're all going out. Here, all the field lines, they're crossing the circle, but they're all coming in. Here, the field lines, each field line comes in here, enters the circle here, exits the circle here. Enters here, exits here. Enters here exits here okay so when the field line enters you have a sink you have a negative divergence but when the field line exits you have a source right it's a positive divergence so a negative and a positive divergence well in this case then the divergence is zero the divergence is zero right because there's no net charge inside right uh, they're coming in going out coming in going out coming in going out so there's no net field, okay? So what is the moral of the story here? Well, you might have noticed a pattern here, right? For the positive charge, the divergence is positive. For the negative charge, the divergence is negative. And when there's no charge at all, the divergence is zero. So this got Gauss thinking. He started to think, okay, okay, what if I could come up with a general equation? What if 
the divergence of the electric fields is a, a sign of how much net charge is inside, how much the volume charge density is inside. So this is Maxwell's first equation. So on the right hand side, what I have here, this P looking sign is called rho, rho, and what it signifies is how much charge is inside. Okay, it's uh, technically it's a volume charge density, but you can just imagine how much charge is inside. And this is just a constant known as the permittivity of free space. So let's try to understand what this is really telling us. The Gauss's law is nothing groundbreaking. In fact, if I really, if you really understand it, it might even become obvious. What Gauss's law is really telling you is if you stand really long outside a movie theater, you can tell how many people went to watch a movie. Okay, so for example, for example, uh, you might have heard of the movie Avatar by James Cameron, right? So let's say you don't have enough money to buy the movie ticket, okay? So you're, you're standing outside like a lonely loser and you, you're, you're angry, right? You're pissed. You don't get to see the movie. But at least you can see the people who are leaving, right? Yeah, so, so here's the door and people are, people are leaving the movie theater. First they enter and then they exit the movie theater, right? And so you start counting, all right, how, how is, was this movie even good in the first place? How many people came to see it? Well, you start counting, all right, there's, there's five people that entered, there's two that came out, so there's still three inside watching the movie. It must be pretty good, right? So you do this kind of math and you figure out, okay, uh, there's this many people inside the movie theater left because I saw this many come in and that many go out. So that's really what Gauss's law is telling us, right? It's telling us, okay, this many field lines went out, this many came in. So there's that many charges inside. Gauss's law is just another way to say you don't have enough money to watch the movie, so just see how many people went to watch it in the first place, right? Uh, here's another way to understand Gauss's law, another analogy. If I have a box, a mystery box, filled with balls. And I know each ball is maybe one gram, right? Let's say I know each ball is one gram, but I don't know how many balls are inside the box. When I put the box on the weight machine and I see 100 grams, then I know I don't have to do any math. I don't have to open the box. If each ball is one gram and the, and the machine says, weight machine says, the box weighs 100 grams, then I immediately know there's 100 balls in the box, right? No math needed. That's all Gauss's law is telling you. If I know uh, how, what, how many electric field lines are crossing the, the circle, then I immediately know how many charges are inside the circle. That's all Gauss's law is telling you. All this is telling you is that the divergence of the electric field is the volume charge density over epsilon naught. In other words, if you put a box of one gram balls on a weight machine, but you don't know how many balls are in the box, but you see that the weight is 100 grams, then you immediately know there's 100 balls in the box. Same way, if I put some number of charges in the circle, but I don't know how many charges, and I just look at what the net number of electric field lines coming in and going out is, then I know what the number of charges in the box is. So all, that's all that Gauss's law tells you. It's just a game of counting and figuring out what's inside based on what's outside. In other words, Gauss's law is really like this. I don't know what, how many charges are inside. Okay, I, oh, I don't know how many plus charges, how many minus charges are inside this circle. But what I do know is that there's, for example, there's three field lines coming out and two field lines going in. So there's a net divergence of one electric field line going out. That means there must be one positive charge inside this sphere. That's all Gauss's law is saying. All right, folks, thank you for watching this episode of Electromagnetism. We'll see you next time.